good health starts inside your mouth because that is where your immune system starts. We have been using products, antiseptic products on the market that aim to kill all bacteria inside your mouth. We have been brainwashed into believing bacteria is bad. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode and welcome back to the podcast, Trina Felber. We have a second edition today and she is America's leading expert on natural oral and skincare. And she is the CEO and creator of Primal Life Organics. And we talked before tons about skincare. If you look at her face, it is flawless. It's unbelievable how good her face looks. If you're listening to this, you've got to watch it. Uh, go to our YouTube channel. But um, welcome, Trina. Ah, thanks, Chantel. And that's so nice of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're talking all about our teeth and our oral care and our healthy mouth. So can you talk a little bit about the oral systemic connection and the role it plays in your overall dental health and your regular health. Yeah, um, we forget that the, the mouth is where it all starts. It's the beginning of not just your digestive system, but your immune system. We have talked a lot, we've heard a lot of um, conversations about the gut health, about leaky gut syndrome and um, malabsorption syndrome and what that does to your immune system. And if you don't have a healthy gut, you don't have a healthy immune system. We talked to you a little bit yesterday about how your gut affects your skin. But what I need to tell everybody, what you need to really hear is probably what your mom and your dentist might have told you a long time ago, is that good health starts inside your mouth. And we hear that, but we don't quite understand what that means. But I'm here to tell you what that exactly means. Once you get it, light bulbs go off, you can make a cool, easy switch, and you can turn your immune system back on inside your mouth. So good health starts inside your mouth because that is where your immune system starts. We have been using products, antiseptic products on the market that aim to kill all bacteria inside your mouth. We have been brainwashed into believing bacteria is bad when that's only 50% true. The other 50% is that there is good bacteria and you are, you are basically a walking um, bacteria load. You carry bacteria from point A to point B. And the good bacteria actually is what keeps you healthy. So when you think about the, the microbiome inside your gut, if you don't have the right microbiome inside your mouth, you are actually missing the, about the first 12 inches of your immune system because your immune system actually starts inside your mouth. H. pylori, E. coli, the common cold, the flu virus, all of that when you're exposed to it, doesn't get exposed in your gut. It actually gets, you get exposed to it inside your mouth, your nose, your sinuses. And by the way, whatever's in your mouth is also the same bacteria that's in, infesting your nose and your sinuses. So if you suffer from a lot of sinus conditions and sinus infections and colds, the reason might be that you are destroying the good bacteria inside your mouth. So you're, you know, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, if you think, I heard someone give an analogy one time that if you think of your gastrointestinal tract as a river, mm -hmm. then the mouth is the source of that river. And what you do in the mouth, it basically sets the stage for everything that's going into your gastrointestinal tract and into the rest of your body. And it's two ways. It either gets in through your gum tissue or you swallow it. So, and I say the same thing. I, my analogy is that it's a tube that we have to stop thinking about our digestive system as inside our body. That entire tube that runs from your tip of your tongue to your tail is really outside of your body, outside of your internal environment. And it starts with the health inside your mouth. Think about it this way. And I like to do this analogy. I talk about pregnancy a lot. And I talk about um, when you, I take you back to when you were in your mother's womb where it was dark and it was cozy and there really was no infection. There might've been um, some bacteria in there <clears throat> to keep you healthy, but the bacteria was good bacteria. Yeah. 
Your immune system, when you were born, you had no immune system. You didn't need one. There was nothing in there that was exposing you to send anything bad that you would need an immune system. So when you're born, uh, babies that are born through the vaginal birth canal, uh, the, the very first exposure to bacteria is through the vagina, the vaginal birth canal. The bacteria in there is what sparks your immune system. So when babies born, they have bacteria from the canal in their nose and their mouth. They first take their first breath that, that throws that bacteria inside. And then when they swallow, they, they swallow the good bacteria inside their mouth and that feeds and seeds their gut, which is pretty much sterile at this point. That is how they develop their immune system. That's why babies that are born vaginally have a stronger immune system than babies that are born through C-section. So C-section babies, there, have been, there has been research that has shown um, as long as mom's vaginal canal is healthy, doing a swab, a vaginal swab into the nose and the mouth of a newborn baby, and that can help spark their immune system. That's why. Your immune system starts in your mouth. Leaky gut syndrome, it, which is what causes malabsorption, it causes a lot of um, inflammation, and it can cause immune system problems. Leaky gut does not start in your gut. Leaky, leaky gut starts inside your mouth as leaky gum serum. I talk about the gum health. If you have any bleeding, inflammation, any issues with your gum tissue, that is a way for inflammation to get inside your body. Mm. Uh, there has been um, the link between gum disease and heart disease and Alzheimer's and uh, diabetes, all inflammatory diseases start from inflammation that most likely has entered through your mouth. So mm. by keeping your mouth healthy, you can prevent not just gum disease, but you can prevent internal inflammation. You can prevent digestive issues. So you have to stop and think. You swallow, your saliva is what protects you 24 hours. Your saliva is what carries whatever's inside your mouth. Even when you're not eating, you swallow your saliva all day. So whatever is inside your mouth is what's feeding and seeding your gut bacteria. And if you're swallowing bad bacteria all day because you've destroyed your good bacteria, then you're not setting yourself up for success in your gut. You're actually probably working against yourself. You're probably taking probiotics. You're probably trying to eat uh, good foods, maybe drink some, um, some kombucha and things like that. But if you're swallowing the wrong bacteria and you have the wrong environment inside your mouth, you're probably not helping the situation out. You're actually making it worse. And it's a really easy switch of the environment inside your mouth. So I usually talk about um, breaking bones. People, people always tell me, you know, you can't heal a cavity. You can't heal gum disease. You can't heal these things. And what I usually tell them is if you believe you can heal a bone, a broken bone, then you really should believe that you can heal a cavity and heal the inside of your mouth because there's no real difference between bone tissue and your teeth. So your teeth are actually made up of the same mineral content. Your teeth are actually stronger than bone. And it's because the environment that it is in. When you think of your bone tissue, your bones are internally housed, which means your pH inside of your body is typically neutral. It falls somewhere between 7.35 and 7.45, and it doesn't really vary outside of that. So when you have an injury inside, when you put minerals back into bone and back into teeth is during an alkaline situation. It has to be alkaline. If the condition is acidic, minerals leave and go towards the acid. The, the minerals leave the bone, the minerals leave the teeth. The reason your bones usually stay hard and firm or you can uh, replace the minerals and heal a bone fracture is because the condition in your body is typically a neutral condition where the minerals can go back from your blood and your, your internal structures into your bone. Inside your mouth is completely different. If you're using the wrong products, you're compounding the issue. Most of the foods that we eat are acidic by nature. Most of the dental products that we're using are destroying our own ability to neutralize those acids inside our mouth. 
What you want is to create an environment inside your mouth where your good bacteria can live because good bacteria inside your mouth lives in a more neutral to alkaline environment. When that happens, your saliva, which is very neutral, can, can also neutralize the acids in your food. And then the minerals that are in your saliva and your food can actually go back into your teeth and heal your teeth. While this is all happening, your gum tissue will get healthier because during those conditions is also when your gum tissue can heal, increase blood flow and decrease inflammation of your gum tissue. So let's talk about mouthwash because maybe you're like me. I love mouthwash. I love my mouthwash routine and I love the fresh feeling that it gives me. And a lot of people I know have transitioned into using a more organic toothpaste. Uh, you know, they like that super minty flavor and they want to use mouthwash. And unfortunately with mouthwash, the traditional mouthwashes has so much alcohol and they have so many ingredients, which I want to name a few of those ingredients like alcohol, chlorine dioxide, parabens, formaldehyde, saccharin. Um, so do you, do you know of, or do you guys carry, I know you've got some amazing toothpaste um, that are phenomenal. Do you guys actually carry mouthwashes as well? So mine's not a mouthwash. Mine is a gum serum, which does the same thing. So like you were talking about those ingredients in mouthwash, mouthwash destroys your good bacteria and it sets you up for bad breath. Bad breath is the very first sign that you have an imbalance between good bacteria and bad bacteria inside your mouth. I have not needed to use mouthwash. I got rid of that a long time ago, but I have not needed to use breath mints or <clears throat> gum in at least five years. I, don't, I, I can't remember the last time I popped a mint in my mouth to make my mouth feel fresh. When you have the right condition inside your mouth, the good bacteria is inside your mouth, you will not really suffer from bad ba breath. In fact, most of my customers report when they wake up, they don't wake up with morning breath anymore. Their mouth is actually clean and still feels clean. And they don't grow the bad bacteria. They don't grow plaque because the condition is right. Um, mouthwash sets you up um, and it actually promotes the breakdown of your teeth and your gum tissue. And it prevents your, your saliva from working the way it's supposed to work to protect you for 24 hours. Regular toothpaste and even um, a lot of natural toothpaste. So what you wanna look for um, in, in oral care products, you want them, there's, there's two or three things that you really need to look for. Um, I, th I always say, I, I believe the ADA has us brain brainwashed into believing that we brush our teeth to clean them. It's really not true. It's, it's really not true. If you're using a toothbrush and water, you are effectively cleaning your teeth and you are actually cleaning them without destroying the bad bacteria. Um, if you just if you have a normal production of saliva, your saliva is actually meant to wash your mouth out continuously. It's supposed to remove the food particles. Obviously things get stuck. You do want to brush your teeth. You do want to do some flossing. But overall, the products that you're using to brush your teeth need to do two or three things. They need to be alkaline. If they are not alkaline. And by alkaline, I mean by a pH, they allow minerals to go back into your teeth. And they also uh, allow the growth of good bacteria so that when you get exposed to something, you're getting like, you're getting exposed to things through your, your, your mouth and your nose. When you're exposed to something that is a virus that grows in an acidic environment, if you have a more alkaline environment inside your mouth, it's not gonna be able to survive. Most of my clients, last year it was really cool. I, had, um, I was doing a Facebook Live and we were talking about oral wellness and there were a bunch of customers of mine that were saying that for the first time in a really, really long time, they went a whole season, flu season and cold season without getting sick. And it's because we restarted their immune system inside the mouth. When you're using the wrong products, you have literally destroyed the first 12 to 16 inches of your immune system. 
And then you, when you go, when it gets down into your digestive system, that's completely different. You don't have the right microbiome down there to fight off the common cold. When the common cold or, or, um, you know, the flu virus gets into your mouth and you can't fight it in there, your sinuses, it can start to harbor in your sinuses. And then you get the sinus infections and things like that. Taking care of your mouth, it, using the right condition, um, allowing the right bacteria to grow can actually restart your immune system. So you want your dental products to first be alkalizing for your mouth. And second, they need to have minerals in them. If you're brushing with something that doesn't have any minerals in it, you might as well be brushing with water because it's not going to do anything to promote the, the dental health, um, the hard enamel, the strong enamel, you're just setting yourself up for a breakdown because under most conditions, we do lose minerals from our teeth almost every day. If we're not replacing those minerals, you end up with sensitive teeth to hot and cold. That's the first sign that you are losing more minerals than you're replacing. And by the way, you cannot take there's no dental supplements out there. You cannot take a supplement to increase the enamel of your tooth. The way that this happens is all inside your mouth. You have to either be brushing with something that has minerals in it, or you need to be eating the food that has um, a high content of minerals. And I'm talking about vegetables um, and fruits and, and meats and things like that, that have a high, bone broth is great, has a high mineral content. The only way your body can remineralize your teeth is through your saliva. And that's an indirect way um, for you to take a supplement. So you do wanna take your vitamins, but if you have digestive issues and you have malabsorption and you're not absorbing all the minerals from your food, or your supplements, your saliva content of minerals is gonna be much less and you're gonna have less availability to your teeth. And if you compound that with acidic foods and the wrong dental products, then you don't really have a chance of remineralizing your teeth. Mm -hmm. Women that are pregnant, there's, there's um, a saying that say, uh, people say, women say, one cavity for every baby born, which basically means that after nine months of harboring and growing a baby, mom ends up with a cavity. And people were asking me, moms were asking me why that happens. That happens because baby is needing to take minerals from mom to grow teeth and bone for themselves. So mom happily gives baby those, those minerals. So her body, her content of minerals is depleted. Her saliva is depleted. And after nine months of depleted saliva, you're not replacing those minerals inside your mouth. So mom ends up with a cavity um, or a sensitive tooth post-delivery. It's an easy fix. All you need to do is brush with an alkalizing toothpaste or tooth powder, um, use a gum serum that's gonna support your gum health, and it has to have minerals in the product that you're using. All right, well, let's jump right into the questions. We just got this question today, and it's very fitting. It's from Sally Jo Marshider in Houston, Texas. I read an article that said you can make your own homemade mouthwash very simply with distilled water and baking soda. And the article said no need to add essential oils as it kills bacteria and it could be harmful to your health. I don't understand how essential oils is bad for you. That doesn't make sense. And it's said to add sea salt to the mouthwash for more mineralizing properties. But then I can't drink it. It's disgusting. I need a recipe to do my own DIY mouthwash. Do you have any or any brands that you suggest? Yeah, so my, my gum serum is what I produced. Um, it's right here, Dirty Mouth Gum Serum. And it's an olive oil base. So first off, if anybody's familiar with oil pulling, oil pulling is really good for your mouth. It's really good for your gum tissue. It helps to get rid of toxins. It increases blood flow, which is gonna get rid of toxins internally. Um, <clears throat> the problem with oil pulling, and I think we talked about this in the last episode, is the pain point of needing to do it for 20 minutes. Yes, it is a 20 minute process. So um, what I did was I created my gum serum. It's an olive oil base and it has 11 and essential oils in it. And I do get that question a lot, like, you know, um, it has essential oils in it, it's gonna be killing all my good bacteria. So there's the knowledge base of good bacteria and bad bacteria live in different environments. They're completely different. Your good bacteria loves alkaline. It's different than bad bacteria that loves acidic. So what this does is creates that alkaline environment and most essential oils are not going to kill all bacteria 
like alcohol and things like that, um, it's really going to just target more the bad bacteria. It's setting your mouth up to be more alkaline, increased blood flow, decreasing inflammation, healing your gum tissue, and supporting your good microbiome inside your mouth. So that's the difference. Um, baking soda is great. I know I get this question a lot too. Can you brush with just baking soda um, or straight charcoal? So my answer is, um, in a short, let me, let me tell you a little bit about my, my products and how I created them. And then this will make a little bit more sense as to why um, straight baking soda and charcoal are not great um, to be brushing with on a daily basis. So when I created my oral wellness um, products, I created them to do the things that you need to do to create internal, internal oral health and allow your immune system to start inside your mouth. That's where it all starts. If you change the environment inside your mouth, you can then remineralize your teeth and you can heal your gum tissue, decrease the inflammation and decrease the chance of that inflammation getting inside your mouth. So when I create, created my tooth powder and my toothpaste, I created them with a blend of three different clays. Clays are very beneficial for the mouth. They're beneficial for the skin. They're beneficial as an internal cleanse. A lot of people, and I do a detox cleanse once a month, um, drinking bentonite clay. You have to make sure it's a food grade clay if you're ingesting it. But for my tooth powder, what I did in my paste is I blended three different clays, a bentonite clay, kaolin clay, and a French green clay. So a lot of toothpaste, natural toothpaste on the market do not contain any minerals at all. <clears throat> A lot of them will only contain one clay, which is usually bentonite clay, which is great, but it's not all inclusive. So when I blended the three uh, clays of mine, I blended them so that they have a full spectrum of all the minerals that your teeth need. And the French green clay is from the sea. So it actually has the nutrients from LJ and other plants that grow in the sea. So it's actually green and it has the phytonutrients LJ and phytonutrients are also analgesic and anti-inflammatory. So it's also really beneficial for decreasing inflammation in the gum tissue. So by blending those three clays, the other missing link from a lot of, a lot of um, different natural tooth powders and toothpaste is that the, while clay itself is alkalizing, it's not alkalizing enough inside your mouth. Remember, your mouth tends to be more acidic because of the foods that we're eating. I mean, like even red meat, coffee, most of the things that we're eating are, are acidic in nature. Uh, so if you're just using something that's a more, that's a, a neutral to slightly alkaline, it's probably not going to be alkaline enough to kind of change the condition inside your mouth so that your saliva can work for 24 hours. Mm. So what I did was created it with some baking soda. So I've got the blend of three clays with a little bit of baking soda to make it more alkaline so that you can then alkalize your mouth while you're brushing and those minerals are right there. So let me show you, I have anybody that's watching. So I highly recommend if you're listening to go back and watch because some of the props that I use help to really show. So this is your tooth right here. And this is your enamel. The white part of your tooth is your enamel. Underneath your enamel, the blue part is your dentin. Your dentin is the fluid filled part of your tooth. It's fluid filled so that it's kind of like the shock absorber or the cushion for every time you bite, you're not feeling pain because what's housed inside your dentin is the pulp, which contains your nerves and your blood vessels. This is why you can't take a supplement to directly affect your enamel because your blood vessels are deep inside your pulp and they're not connected to your enamel. Everything to fix your enamel has to happen on the outside through your food, your saliva, and what you're brushing your teeth with. So this tooth has a cavity in it that actually dips down into the dentin. What's happened is the mineral loss has gone so far that it is now down into the dentin. That's when you start to feel the pain because your nerves and your blood vessels are right there. When you're brushing with my dirty mouth tooth powder or my toothpaste, what you're doing is cleansing the surface of the tooth. Most toothpaste, including natural toothpaste, include an ingredient called glycerin. When you're talking about harmful ingredients, glycerin, and I get this all the time, it's not toxic. You're right. Glycerin is technically not something that's going to cause internal health issues, but for your tooth, what glycerin does when you're brushing with it is it puts what I call either saran wrap or a band-aid 
on top of your tooth. It puts a coating on. So a lot of sensitive products out there for sensitive teeth use glycerin uh, so that you don't feel the damage that is being created. So mm -hmm. while you're not feeling it, that Band-Aid is also not allowing minerals from your food or your saliva to heal that portion of your tooth mm -hmm. or any portion of your tooth. There was a study that said it took 20 hard swishes to actually remove glycerin from your teeth, which basically means for a lot of people, they brush their teeth in the morning, they put their glycerin coating on, their teeth feel great. Around the evening time, they start to get a little sensitive. They start to feel a little sensitivity. It's time to brush their teeth again. They brush their teeth again. The sensitivity goes away and it's just a cyclic thing that happens. Eventually they go to the dentist and the dentist says, oh, you have a cavity. How can I have a cavity? Well, the cavity is there because you're not allowing, even if you're eating good food and minerals and your saliva has minerals in it, you're not able to remineralize that too. So what I did with my toothpaste and tooth powder, what happens for some people is when you start brushing with it, it's actually going to clean your teeth really well. And it's going to clean off that glycerin coating. And when that happens, any sensitive spots that you have probably are going to sting or burn or tingle a little bit until you get those minerals back in. But while you're cleaning them off, the minerals from my tooth powder and my toothpaste are right there. And it's like a lock and key. They can fit in and start laying down the building blocks to rebuild that enamel so that you can actually heal a cavity. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far, but as you know, I've interviewed over a thousand women and every time I've watched a thin eater eat, I realize that maintaining a healthy weight is a skill that can be taught and mastered over time. That's why I created a video course that will teach you all the tips that I learned to help me lose over 30 pounds. It's way more powerful to watch the thin eaters than even to listen or to read it. Go to ChantalRayWay.com slash video for a free glimpse. If you're wanting to take yourself to the next level, everyone needs a coach. Every professional player has a coach. We want to come alongside you and help you in your journey. Go to ChantalRayWay.com slash coaching. I just had someone listen to the audiobook three times and she just emailed me and she said by her listening to the audiobook three times, that's what did it. That's what allowed her to really lose the weight. We have an amazing offer for you. It's the second edition of my book, which has tons more information. It has the audiobook, the ebook. It normally runs for $29.99. You can get it today for $4.99. Go to ChantelRayway.com slash deal to get it. Now back to the show. So I had a customer one time um, that had six cavities and needed a root canal. And she purchased my dirty mouth tooth powder um, as a last resort. She thought, you know, if I can try and heal my teeth or help my other teeth, um, then I'm going to try this. So she tried it. She brushed with it for a couple weeks, went to her dentist to have her root canal, sat down in the chair and uh, the dentist took one look in her mouth and he said, you know what, Miss Gibbs, you only have one small cavity. Your root canal no longer needs a filling or a root canal and your other teeth have healed. So go home. So she was super, super excited about that. I mean, imagine like sitting down in the dentist chair. This is what happens for a lot of my, my patients or my customers. They sit down in the dentist chair their gums are no longer bleeding. They, they get a really good score on their gum tissue. They don't have any plaque buildup because plaque grows in an acidic environment. Plaque is actually the bacteria eating the sugars from your diet, creating a biofilm. And that's what plaque is. And it lives in an acidic environment. And if you break that down with alkaline solutions, um, then you no longer have plaque. So they sit down, they get their cleaning and they go home and they don't have the costly dental bills. Their teeth are clean, their teeth are strong, their teeth are white. Awesome. Well, let's jump right into the next question. It's from Janie in Seattle. I'm confused about fluoride in water. I've always heard that fluoride in our water was good because it protected our teeth. Now I'm hearing it can actually cause other health problems. Do we need fluoride for healthy teeth? Janie in Seattle. Oh, that's a good question, Jamie. So, uh, so the answer is, were you born with fluoride in your body? I mean, I mean, maybe a little bit because your mom, but honestly, nobody has fluoride 
in their body naturally. It's all artificial. So um, when you go back for me and um, being a nurse and getting back to nature and getting back to our health aspect of our body. Um, I believe that healing the body happens when you give the body what it really wants, which is what it was born with. So fluoride doesn't do anything for it. Here's what fluoride does. And, and anybody that uses um, uh, peroxide for cleaning, I can talk a little bit about that too. But fluoride actually, so when I talk about the minerals in your teeth, I'm talking mostly about calcium, um, phosphorus, there's other minerals as, long, as well, but those are the primary ones. Um, there's no fluoride in your enamel and there's no, in your dentin, there's no fluoride in your bone. But what happens when you start brushing with fluoride or drinking fluorinated water is that the fluoride kicks out your minerals and replaces your minerals with fluoride. The thought behind that is fluoride is harder and fluoride will keep your teeth cavity resistant. If that were true, why do we still have so many cavities? Why do we have worsening dental health, not improved dental health? We shouldn't even have cavities if that was the case, but that's not the truth. The truth of the matter is cavities are actually increasing, not decreasing after fluoride was introduced into our dental products and our water and whatever else they're putting in it. The other interesting finding is once it starts to get down into your dentin, it starts to enter your body. You're swallowing it. It's going to get absorbed into your body. They're finding fluoride in bone tissue, um, in, in your bones, as well as other tissue. Fluoride is a neurotoxin and it causes issues with your pineal gland. Um, an overdose of fluoride, too much fluoride, causes issues with your teeth. So fluoride is not needed. If you are replacing your minerals with something like my toothpaste or my tooth powder, um, if you're using something like that, um, you're replacing mineral for mineral and you don't need fluoride. In fact, um, my kids, I've never um, gotten any kind of fluoride treatments for my kids. We um, have a whole house water um, filtration system. Fluoride is something that's um, they might be exposed to minimally when they're eating food outside of our house, but on a daily basis, they're not exposed to it and have never had a treatment with the dentist. And my kids have never had a cavity, never had any dental issues. In fact, the reason I started creating dental products is because my daughter was born um, at the age of two, one of her molars came in and it had a natural cavity in it that was something, something like this. Um, and we took her to the dentist and the dentist said that in utero, during the development of that tooth, I probably had like an illness or a fever or something like that. And uh, so she ended up with a molar that had a natural cavity. He said the defect was pretty significant, at the age of two, he was just going to put a temporary filling in it, hope for the best, but we were probably going to have to pull that tooth within um, a year. So I started doing my research. I came across Dr. Weston Price, who was a dentist in the early 1900s, who was way before his time. He studied third world countries. When I talk about how the immune system starts inside your mouth, if I go back to Dr. Weston's Price studies, you can totally see the difference between the US and the American diet and, and um, third world countries. When you look at the pictures of these people, their mouth is huge. They have big white teeth. They are usually not obese and they don't have heart disease. They don't, they're not, they don't have diabetes and things like that. As soon as you bring them to the US and start supersizing their food um, portions and feeding them all processed foods and the wrong kind of fats, the first thing that suffers is their oral wellness. That goes downhill immediately. Then they start to get yellowing teeth. Their gums start to bleed. Following that, they start to get obese. They have heart disease. Now they're diabetic. And we've started the whole chain of events that happens for us. But if we go back to what Dr. Weston Price was teaching, what I learned was that the minerals in the soil, the alkalizing things that they were eating and using was what was keeping their mouth healthy, their immune system inside their mouth, their teeth healthy, and their gums healthy, which inadvertently affects the inside of your body. All right, Jeff in Greensboro. I'm a coffee addict. I drink about three cups a day, but now my teeth are starting to get stained yellow. Are there any natural whiteners I could try? Oh yes, this is a great question. And I wish I had my LED teeth whitener with me. I don't 
see it on my table. Hold on, let me look for a second. So yellowing teeth um, happens for a couple reasons as we get older. Um, when I was talking about your enamel, if you're not brushing with the right products and if you're not um, remineralizing your teeth, if your saliva is not able to remineralize your teeth and your diet's not. Uh, so as far as diet goes, even um, eating a healthy organic diet isn't the same as it used to be. So probably 50 years ago, our grandparents could, or great grandparents could eat one carrot and get enough minerals to remineralize their enamel and keep their mouth healthy. Today, you probably have to eat eight because our soil is so mineral depleted. So you do need to supplement, even when you're eating healthy, you do need to supplement and make sure that you are taking your supplements, your digestive health is healthy so that you can, your saliva has a good amount of minerals as well as that you're brushing with something that has minerals in it. But when you're talking about the yellowing of your tooth, what happens as we get older is our enamel starts to wear thin. That's the main reason that you start to see the yellowing. When you look at the dentin, the dentin is the layer beneath that has more, it has minerals in it, but it has a lot of fluid in it as well. That fluid makes it look yellowish or bluish. So as we get older, the, the thinner our enamel, the more we see our dentin through our teeth. And if you're seeing like the yellowish and the bluish tint, it could be because your enamel is really thin. And if you remineralize your teeth and rebuild that enamel, your enamel is the whitest part. It's going to cover up the dentin. Your teeth will naturally look thicker and whiter and be stronger. Coffee itself is going to put, um, it, coffee itself is acidic. So um, by drinking coffee, you are, um, and if you're not using the right products, the acids are gonna wear away at your teeth and reduce the enamel content, the minerals. And it's also gonna cause um, staining on the outside. So what a lot of people do is they use peroxide treatments. This is how peroxide works to whiten your teeth. It's the opposite of what you really want. So peroxide works by dehydrating the fluid out of your dentin. Remember, your dentin is yellowish or bluish in tinge. So by dehydrating it, it's going to make it more opaque. So you don't really see the color and it looks more clear. So that's how peroxide makes your teeth look whiter is by pulling the moisture out. That's also why peroxide treatments hurt because once it gets into the dentin, you're in your pulp, which houses your blood vessels and your nerves are right there. And peroxide is a nerve irritant. It's also not good for your microbiome inside your mouth. And it's also not good for your gum tissue. And when you swallow it, because you will swallow some of it, it's not good for your esophagus and your digestive system as well. So peroxide, the other key point, anyone out there that has amalgam fillings, the silver mercury fillings still in their mouth, and um, by a study, um, a lot of people over the age of 40 still have at least one or two mercury fillings, you should not be using anything with peroxide in it. Toothpaste, any uh, whitening um, systems or anything like that, because peroxide actually breaks down the amalgam filling and can leach the mercury into your body. So what I did was created a system, it's called the Real White Teeth Whitening System, and it contains, the gel itself is black. I'm trying to see if I have, I know I have some, give me one second, I'm gonna scooch over here and grab my black gel so you can see it. So while you're grabbing that, I'll just ask another question. So on the whole talk about, you know, getting rid of those mercury fillings, there um, have been people who've talked about the fact that after they've removed those amalgam fillings, their health has gotten worse because the, when they take the dental fillings out, um, that mercury is going into your body and that makes more health problems. Have you heard of that at all? Oh yeah. You definitely want someone doing, like you want to go to a dentist, probably a biological dentist is probably your best bet, but someone who specializes in removing amalgam fillings. You don't want to just go to a, a regular dentist and have them removed. You want the, them done by a specialist, someone who knows how to remove them because there is a special way to remove them. Um, my LED teeth whitener, 
Um, my red and blue LED teeth light whitener actually plugs into your cell phone. It's a mouthpiece that fits inside your mouth. It has red LED lights and blue LED lights. The blue LED lights light up and help to whiten your teeth and kill the bad bacteria. The blue light or the red lights help to increase. So red light therapy, it's the same red light therapy that people use for their skin. It increases blood flow, increases or, or decreases inflammation. And that um, when you're talking about one place in your body that you want to decrease inflammation, inside your mouth is probably the number one place that you want to do that. Decreasing the inflammation in your gum tissue is going to keep your gums healthier and reduce the inflammation internally. So the red lights are going to help reduce the inflammation in your gums. But my gel was created. I created the gel so it's peroxide free, so it's pain free. So anybody that has issues with pain, this will help it's going to do the exact opposite of what peroxide does. Instead of working to dehydrate your, your dentin, what you really want to do, if you want to increase the whiteness of your teeth, which basically means you want to increase the thickness of your enamel, which means you're going to be cavity resistant, you want to use something that's going to rebuild your enamel. So what I did was I created my olive oil base because olive oil is gentle on your gums, gentle on your teeth, but helps to pull toxins and has nutrients in it for your gum tissue. It has um, activated charcoal, which is going to pull toxins from your gum tissue, keep them super clean, but also remove the surface coffee stains, red wine stains, red food stains, things like that that immediately will help whiten your teeth. But over time, this is not like a, I'm gonna do it today and my teeth are gonna be bright, bright white tomorrow. This is a process, um, when you buy my kit, you get 20 treatments. That's a one month supply of the gel. It has minerals in it. So it has two different clays in it that while you're doing your treatment, the minerals are gonna actually be able to rebuild your enamel, strengthen and thicken your enamel. And over time, your enamel is gonna get thicker and your oral wellness is gonna be better and your teeth are actually gonna be whiter for the right reason, not because you've dehydrated the, the dentin and made your teeth weaker. So what the recommendation is, is to do five 20 minute treatments for the first month each week and then after that, you can do um, two, sometimes three treatments a week, just depending on your oral health and your schedule, but two to three treatments a week. And I say that's for life. It really does help your, your gum tissue, your mouth, and your teeth stay stronger and whiter. All right, last question, Megan in Dallas. I have a one-year-old son and want to start brushing his teeth, but I want something natural or organic. Can you recommend any organic toothpastes that are safe in case he swallows it? So yeah, you know, what I when I created mine, I created my toothpaste and my tooth powders for kids. Um, I mean, I made it because my daughter had a defect in her molar. By the way, that molar that was supposed to be pulled within a year, she just lost it naturally when she was turning 11 years old, when she was supposed to lose it. So that original filling stayed in place. The tooth never had any more damage to it. And we, are, we were able to keep that tooth for the life of the tooth. So um, when I create my products, I create them because I'm a mom and because I know my kids are gonna swallow stuff. Um, and in fact, my toothpaste, um, when I created my, I, I, my, my kids flavors are bubble gum. So this is my bubble gum toothpaste. Um, and it's, um, it, it uses essential oils for the flavor. Um, but the clay that I use is food grade and the baking soda obviously is food grade. Uh, so this is safe to swallow the, both of my tooth powder, all of my tooth powders, all of my toothpaste are safe to swallow. As an adult, I recommend that you, um, that you spit. Uh, mainly because the clay is going to be pulling toxins. Um, and as you're brushing for two minutes, that you, you don't necessarily want to swallow those toxins. You can, the clay binds really well and it's just going to carry it through, but spitting it out is probably the best thing. But for kids, my kids actually will take, um, when, when, especially when we first made it, they loved it so much that they would actually scoop it out on their finger and actually eat the toothpaste. Um, and I made it that way because I'm a mom and I know they're going to do that. So I want them to be safe. If you look at regular toothpaste, especially anything that has fluoride in it, there's a warning on the back that says if more than is rec the recommended amount is used, call poison control. And the recommended amount is the size of a pea. And when you talk about brushing your teeth, most people 
when they're using toothpaste are doing the whole swirl because that's what they show on the commercials. They show these bright white pearly whites and this big swirl of toothpaste. That's actually toxic, especially when you're swallowing it, especially as a child who's a lot smaller than us and doesn't have the right immune system and things like that. So technically anything larger than a pea size is toxic to the body. Um, when you're swallowing regular toothpaste. But with my toothpaste, um, I, like I mentioned, I do a clay detox every month where I actually mix clay into water and drink it. So basically the only difference is that um, it doesn't have the baking soda in it, but I'll mix the clays and it helps to pull toxins. So um, that's what Are I- Are you fasting while you're doing that as well? Not necessarily, no. I usually do my clay detox the first, second and third of every month. And I usually do a drink of the, um, I'll mix a tablespoon of some clay in water before bed. I go to bed and it um, detoxes it detoxes me out. Okay, so you're going to be able to get some of these amazing products at a discount if you go to chantelrayway.com slash skin. I just want to mention if anybody's interested, probably the most common package that people start with is my 21-day oral detox kit. Yeah. It's actually a 60-day supply of toothpaste or it's tooth powder. So you'll get a white formula and um, that you brush with in the morning. And then the black formula has activated charcoal, which is going to help detox your gums a little bit better and your whole mouth tissues. You also get the tongue scraper. You get the toothbrush that has the activated charcoal infused right into the bristles. And you'll also get the gum serum. So after and about- don't you get the deodorant for free? And you also get the deodorant. Yeah, you also get my deodorant for free. So that's the bonus gift. So if you guys grab it now while the deodorant's free, that's you know that's probably the best deal because the deodorant's amazing. But after 21 days, your your gums and your mouth are pretty much detoxed, and it's a 60 day supply. So you just continue the same routine, and the routine's easy. It's the same thing you do, um, no matter what you're brushing with. You just brush for two minutes, and then scraping your tongue takes a, less than 10 seconds. You can do it once or twice a day. The gum serum is a quick little drop on your finger and rubbing it on your gum tissue. That's it. Simple. Awesome. Well, if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at ChantalRayway.com. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.